Hello, everyone. How are we doing this morning? Good. Look how many people are here. So good to see you. Welcome to those of you who are online as well. Thanks for joining us. We are going to start this morning by lifting up our voices. So if you will stand with us and sing it out, okay? Now I see. To darkness I was Rejected and cut off from home I couldn't see His love for me He said he's not who he seems Don't get your hopes up for healing But I fell away When I saw his ways My heart burns to life I saw delight in a moment to greet your neighbor and let them know that you are so glad to see them this morning. That would be wonderful.
Well, good morning. Welcome to Church in the Village. For you who don't know who I am, I'm Eric Clarkson. I'm the pastor here, and I'm glad that you joined us here or online if you're watching. Um, I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Somebody snuck it back in on me. I think it was Matt. I don't think I need to be that loud, but I guess I can be. Um, well, once again, welcome this morning. Um, I just got a quick few announcements before we get to the main show today, and, um, and I'll introduce them here in a second. They don't really have official name. So I just make it, like each time they dance for us, I just kind of give them a different name, and hopefully it'll stick one day, right? But uh, um, we do have a student crossing this evening at 6.30, our ministry center. It's kind of our youth ministry here at, as a church, and uh, if you want to join us over there, it's just kind of fun time. We play some games, and we learn a little bit. We're learning about the redemptive, the whole redemptive story of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, where Jesus and God are they're just present through the whole Bible and all the stories that we grew up learning. Um, so if you want to be a part of that, you can. Um, Wednesday, um, we're learning about how our stories are a part of the... That's Wednesdays is our adult kind of village crossing. If you want to join us, we're learning about how our stories are a part of this ongoing redemption story that God, um, God is doing in our world, even though it doesn't seem like it, right? So we do have a couple things coming up with the school. Um, we are doing the baccalaureate service here in the auditorium. Baccalaureate service is like a, uh, it's a religious ceremony to honor graduates. And so that'll be um, May 23rd at 7 p.m. here. We are asking that graduates um, come just a little bit early. We have some refreshments for them. We'll have a gift for them if they want to come. If you just want to come and be a part of that service, we will pray over the graduates at the end. We would love for this place to be packed out to celebrate those graduates. And the week before that, we're going to do a, uh, on the 18th, we're going to help out with the senior picnic. And so if anybody wants to help out with that, it's usually just serving some snow cones and playing some games with the seniors. And that's really about it. So before I pray, I am going to introduce our, our young ladies here. Um, I'm going to call them the uh, Zoe Brickner Dance Brigade. Brigade, right? Zoe Brickner's the leader. She, every Monday, they work... Um, every Monday, they, they come in every Monday morning in our ministry center. They've been doing it all year long. And uh, so they've been practicing and, and getting ready, and we're kind of the rehearsal. And so I, I'll introduce them now. Zoe's right there. She's kind of in charge of them. I am going to pray before they start. I'll just turn it over to them. Um, um, there are a couple prayer requests that I asked for you guys to pray for this morning, specifically um, Dylan Spangler, who is Tiffany Baker, our, our children's uh, minister here, Matt's wife, he had to have his knee worked on. He has popped his knee out of place twice in the last year. So they had to go in Friday and kind of reconfigure things in his knee. So pray for his recovery. And the second is a young man that may, some of you guys may not know, um, us from Carlisle do know, is Carson Burney. Um, Carson is Amanda's nephew, Rob's nephew. Um, Carson... Um, had a kidney stone, gosh, three weeks ago. What, they found it three, four weeks ago. Um, had it kind of taken out, had to have a stent put in, and then he went down to Florida for spring break. He's on the baseball team, so he's kind of hanging out. And it got infected, and he had a mass on and it kind of got infected. He has spent almost three full weeks in the hospital. Is that right? Somewhere around 10, 13 days, two weeks in the hospital. Getting, he had to have a transfusion this past week. Um, and um, but he's home and we're hopefully he's getting better um, Tiffany had reached out and um, to say if we would put him on your prayer list so continue to pray for Carson hey if you know Carson just shoot him a message man just pop, you know get a little smile on his face because we know kind of helping you know those things kind of help healing right and and the the hard thing for Carson is he's a senior and so the last four weeks of his senior year have been that's what he's been doing so we're going to pray, and I'm going to turn it over to the young ladies. Um, you guys ready? All right, well, let me pray for you guys, and let's pray for our service today. Father, we thank you that, that you are a glorious, healing God. And this morning, we want to lift up Dylan to you this morning. Heal his knee. Let this, let this surgery be the thing that he needed to get his knee back in place. Lord, we also pray for Carson this morning. As, as he's had to battle all these infections and the kidney stones, all this stuff, Lord, we, we pray that you come down and just touch him and, and, and heal him. Let today just be a, a miracle today that he can just get some life back in him and just let him just be able to find a, do the things that makes him happy. 
Lord, also just heal his body. Lord, we, we come to worship you. We come to use everything that we have this morning to worship you. The music, Amber and Matt, and, and the dancing with the young ladies and Zoe's hard work that they can come. And we just honor you in everything. And when we open up your word this morning, that you just change our lives. So, Lord, use everything in this service to point everybody back to you and how glorious and wonderful you are. And we ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Yo, we're just there for do it and do life, big. You see me? I gotta slow down. Sorry, I did video. Oh, I like this out. All right, great job, guys. Let's give them another. Yay, thank you, Zoe. So sweet. Well, if you'll stand with us, we're just going to continue lifting up our voices. through generations I know that you will keep your covenant I'm calling on a God of Moses the one who opened up the ocean I need you now to do the same Oh, I'll pour out the rages. 
face collide But I've got my own giants Oh God, my God, I need you Oh God, my God, I need you now I need you now Oh, oh rock, oh rock, I'll wait I'm standing on your faithful face On your faithful face Oh God, my God our prayer this morning, Spirit, that you would just fill us to overflowing. God, that it would spill out into everyone that we speak to this week and throughout our lives, really. We need you to work in us and through us. We need your healing. God, we need you to just hold us together. Lord, that you are with us, that you dwell within us, that you walk with us. We're so grateful to you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, God, our Father, you're so good, and we worship you this morning. How could I express 
could sing these songs as I often do but every song must end and you never do so I throw up my hands and praise you again Father, that's why we're here today is to just sing hallelujah with our lives and our minds and, and Lord that we know in you and the gift that you've given us through your, your son's sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection that gratitude is all we can do so we lay down our lives and we follow you this morning we ask this in your son Jesus Christ's name Amen. You may be seated. Kids, you can head on back with my mom, Miss Mikey, back there. Um, if your kids are going back, um, you'll see the sign as you're going out to the right there. Um, and if you want to take them back later on, you can. You just go like you're going out, and uh, she'll be back there teaching them and enjoying the day. Um, Brody's going to come around. Brody and Miles is Miles helping out today. So Brody and Miles is going to come around. If you want to give this morning, just kind of flag them down and... Um, They'll make sure that you guys can give this morning. The older I get, and Nicole may not agree with the statement I'm getting ready to make, um, the older I get, um, the more I make purchases 
on a need base and not a want base. And I see Nicole's laughing about that right now. But uh, um, for instance, I love shoes. Everybody in my family knows I love shoes. And uh, um, there's some other people in here I know that love shoes as well. Um, but I am a special kind of like, I like shoes. I like all different styles of shoes, right? And, and so where I have grown in my purchases and my love for shoes is, when I was just out of high school, I worked at the finish line, which was a disaster for a young man just right out of high school. Um, I used to justify my purchases of shoes were like the newest shoe that came out, my heart would be like, I want that shoe, right? And I worked there when those, the, the Jordan, the, I just, but uh, um, like the patent leather Jordans, you guys remember? Yeah, the ones that everybody wants. I, I, I hate to admit this. I was alive when they were first like new, right? And I was working at the finish line when they first came out. I never bought them because I'm like, man, that shoe right there. And I should have bought it like original, like original ones and probably sold it and bought a house with them right now. But, uh, you know, um, but it was like my heart would just be like, I got to have these purchases. I got to have these shoes. I got to have all the new shoes that are out. Right? And now, you know, I'm a little bit more practical when I buy shoes. Right, Nicole? Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm way practical when I buy shoes. I, I check to see how many shirts I would have that would go with the shoes. Right? You guys get what I'm saying? Like, oh, I got four or five shirts that I could wear with these shoes. So I'm justifying, like, I can get these shoes. And Nicole's like, eh, I don't know if you need your 30-second pair of shoes. I'm like, but Nicole, I've got so many shirts to go with it. She goes, you've already got like five pairs of gray shoes. I'm like, but these have a different color swoosh. And she's like, it doesn't matter. Or, hey, it's a different color of Chuck Taylor. It doesn't matter, right? So now I'm like, hey, I can, I can buy these shoes and, be, and feel okay about it, right? But early on in my life, it was the emotion of the next shoe coming out. And then I would buy my clothes for that, right? So now I just buy on practicality, right? even though I, I really do have way more shoes than I have, and, and 32 is, that's a, that's a low estimate. I just didn't want you guys to feel bad for it. Like, I didn't want you guys to look at me like bad, like this guy's got a lot of shoes. But um, see, this as we're living these love letters, and we've been talking about in, in the first uh, epistle of John, and we've called them love letters, right? And as we've been living these love letters out in our life, See, we know the reason that Jesus came was to destroy the works of the devil and also bring us back to the Creator by a sacrifice. And see, we live that out as we learned last week. We live it out by laying down our lives and picking up Him. See, but the danger of this life that we're now living in the love letters of God is basing everything on feelings. So the next two weeks, to this week and next week, we're going to kind of talk about the deceiving, the, the deception that feelings can bring on our journeys, right? See, that's the danger of this. Is like I'm going to base everything on my life on how I feel. Do I feel like I've just let him down, or do I do, do, I do things that earn my love for him, or learn his love for me? See, it feels like I need to feel a certain way to know that I'm following sometimes in my life. And John's going to tell us here, and starting in verse 19 in chapter 3 this morning, 1 John, he says this, By this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our hearts before him. Forever when our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart. If you have a Bible or if you have the app out this morning, underline, highlight that. It doesn't matter what your heart says. Your heart can say you're a dirtbag. Right? For whenever our hearts condemns us, God is greater than our heart. And he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in his name, in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another just as he had commanded us in verse 24. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. So John once again shows us here how we are to know we are in him. And it's by the way we follow. See, it's important to note that we still have this battle of this sinful nature that's inside of us, right? And this sinful nature is actually a selfish nature. Right? The sinful nature actually wants to 
whatever you want, right? Think about me buying those shoes. It was just I wanted the next shoe, right? It was that I want what I want, and I want it now, and I don't care what anybody else says. That's what the sinful nature does to us. Right? And we still have this battle no matter if we follow or not, right? Which is why John says laying down our wills and picking up him daily, picking up his will daily, is how we abide in him. It's not a just, hey, well, I'm a Christian now. I don't have to battle anything anymore. See, the problem for the early Christians that John's writing to here, and really us now, is that we tie everything in our life on how we feel. We went to a baseball game in Charleston, West Virginia Friday, the Savannah Bananas. I'm going to tell you right now, it's unbelievable. So if you get yourself to find tickets, the baseball's really good, by the way. It's not just Harlem Trotters, the baseball is really good. But I was really hungry after the game. And so we stopped at a place called Cookout, which is kind of a southern place, right? And, and at that moment at 10 o'clock at night, I should have done what was best for me. But the way I feel took over, took over, right? The way I felt about what I wanted to eat. So nobody at 10 o'clock at night should eat a hot dog that has chili, mustard, onions, and coleslaw on top of it. But I felt hungry, right? See, our, and that's just a small way of looking like there's times in our life that what we want will take over even though we know it's not best for us. Trust me, it was not best, Right? And see, by our feelings, we can be deceived. So John lays out the facts in this section of Scripture, that we, the facts we can look at to have assurance of our salvation in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So two questions as we dig in a little bit deeper this morning. The first one is, what is the fact that gives us this assurance? And the second is this, what should that, where should that confidence be placed? Right? What is the fact that gives us assurance? It's his love. See, there's times in my life I'm not sure why Nicole married me. Part of it's when we're shopping for shoes. The other part is most of the times it comes with fixing things around the house. You guys have heard this many a times. And for you guys that come over to my house on, on Wednesday, especially Don, John and D Dusty, I still haven't put the cabinet door back on. That's the new look, right? To have open cabinets, right? You guys can let me feel better about myself, right? I haven't put the cabinet door back on. And see, most of those times, it's how I feel, right? I don't know why Nicole married me because I feel like I'm inadequate because I, I can't fix things around the house, right? But then I realize, I just realized in my life that Nicole doesn't love me because of what I can do for her, but just because of who I am, right? She would have realized a long time ago, I don't, that guy doesn't really do a whole lot. Mows the grass sometimes, <laughs> right? I'm not a handy guy. I'm not a, you know, I'm not, a, I, there's some things I can do. I can change light bulbs pretty well, but I'm 5'6", so I mean, like, it's not like I can just reach up there and get them, right? But I realized a long time ago when I started feeling like that, that like, why does she love me? That it has nothing to do with my ability to do things for her, but it's just because of who I am. That changed everything about our early on in our marriage. It was, I, I didn't have to do as much. I still do. I, I want to. But um, So here's the fact that we need to have when we're looking for assurance on our journeys with Jesus. It's that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is the result of what love and action is. See, true love, there's action to it. It's not just a feeling that I throw out. True love is there an action, and that action was Jesus died on a cross for our sins. Actually, first before that, he came out his throne in heaven, came down, lived in the muck with us, and lived the perfect life that nobody could ever live, and he died for it. And he died so we could have forgiveness of sin, but he rose again to say, hey, listen, you can have a new life. And that new life is on purpose. It's not that we get drifted back up into heaven one day as soon as we follow Jesus. It's because other people need to see that new life. See, this, this love in action is simply this. It's a love that loves us no matter what. If you don't hear anything else this morning, hear this fact. 
that God loves you no matter what, but he loves you too much to leave you in the muck and mess that life is. Like he doesn't just love you to say, hey, I love you, just keep doing what you're doing. He loves you enough to pick you up out of the nastiness of life and transform who you are, no matter what you say about yourself, no matter where you've been in your life. No matter where you're at right now, the love and action is isn't just simply coming down and dying and giving you forgiveness so you can just live in the messiness of all. What he's saying is, I love you so much. I love you just the way you are, but I love you too much to leave you there. There's a better way. So he came out of heaven to give us this chance at new life. And you see, our assurance in that is twofold. First, God already knows everything about you and he still loves you. He knows everything about your life, and he still loves you, just like Nicole. She knows everything about my life. I could have I hid everything, right? Be like, ah, when you're at work, I'll take care of everything. I'm like, hired Brian to come over and fix it. But she knows everything about me, still loves me. See, God, that's the first assurance we need to have, no matter what. He knows everything about you, loves you, cares for you, and he desires to have a relationship with you. The second is this, God knows all things, and he knows who we truly are in Jesus Christ. So let me break that down just a little bit simpler, it's probably just for me this morning. God knows everything, and he knows everything that's going to happen, everything that has happened, right? And so what he means by saying that, that I know you, and I know who you are in Jesus Christ, he knows who you are at your best, not just your worst. And he knows what it takes for you to get there. So that's our assurance that we have. It's a twofold, that he knows you and that he knows who you could be. See, if we are born again, then the real self is the one created in the image of Christ. See, we think the real stuff's what we created, but really the real self of who we are is who God created through Jesus Christ. And the, this fact is how we should change the way we view ourselves. It's not just a unlimited potential we have in Jesus Christ. It's like you could have a new life. Those things that just have devastated your life no longer define who you are. Psalms 139, 13 through 14 says this, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. One of my favorite psalms in the Bible, and it basically says, you created me, you know who I'm supposed to be. See, we need to trust in this fact that he knows us because he created us. And he knows us at its worst, but more importantly, he knows what our best looks like. See, when we go just off of emotions, we will ride a roller coaster of life and will never truly understand what abundant life looks like. See, he promises, Jesus says, Hey, I came to give you life and life more abundant. But when we ride this roller coaster and we just like, Well, God's in my emotion, so we only feel like God's on the mountain, right? We'll never truly understand that there's peace in the valley. And there's abundant life in the valley as well, right? So when we just keep searching for the next spiritual mountaintop, we will miss out on the God in the valley as well. See, if you're in a valley right now this morning, if you're, in, if you're not on that mountaintop where you feel like, hey, I'm Moses, I'm, I'm talking to God, he's giving me a Ten Commandments, that type of stuff, right? Or Jesus on the mountain where he's transfigured, right? And we're searching for those moments. You will miss the God of the valley who's trying to change the things about your life that you need to change. See, he's the God of the mountain. He's the God of the valley. He's the God of the plateau. He's the God of everything in our life. And he will use where we're at to bring us back to him. D.L. Moody says this, I believe Hundreds of Christian people are being deceived by Satan now on this point that they have not got the assurance of salvation just because they're not willing to take God at his word. See, abiding in all parts of our life means trusting his love 
in who he says I am. We're being deceived because we're not willing to trust God's word of who he says we are. And see, the fact is, you're, you're enough. You're his crown jewel of creation. The Bible says everything that was created, it was good. And when he created human beings, it said, it is very good. And you're part of that. You're in the image of him, no matter where you've been at in your life. So that's the fact this morning that we can have assurance of who God says we are is that he loved us enough to come down and live with us in the muck and change us and transform who we are. So where should that confidence be placed in? <clears throat> in his commandments. right? Verses 21 through 23 says this again. Beloved, if our hearts do, does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever... We ask, we receive from him because we have kept his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. I don't know if you're keeping track of how many times just in the first three chapters of 1 John that John has said love one another, but it's a lot. I mean, it's so important that Jesus even said when they asked him what the most important commandment was, was to love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with everything about yourself. And he said the second is just like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. I mean, this is our Lord and Savior. All right, so it's funny. It's really funny to watch the things in my life where I'm confident and where I'm not. You know, fixing things around, definitely not confident. And see, my family can be that way as well. You know, we can be confident in the things we know we do well. You know, Lily knows what she does well, and she's very confident in the things that she does well. Brody knows what he does, and he's very confident in the things that he does. Nicole's very confident in the things she does, right? Somewhat. She's like me a little bit. She's like, like after, way after all this, I'm going to turn to Nicole at some point today and be like, was that okay today? Right? But if it's something we've never done, our family will lack confidence. Right? So we went to Charleston, West Virginia, right? Never been there. Never been to this ballpark that we went to. And, and so our lack of confidence as a family can be the cause of many frustrations as a family. So when we've not done something before, guess what? Guess who has to be the one that has to do it first? Me. Right? And, and always. Like to the point, if we've went to a restaurant we've never been, guess who has to order for all four of us? Me. I'm like, you know what you want. I don't even know what you want. And Lily's like, just give me what I want. I don't know. We've never been here. Right? I've, I've never been here. I, and so our confidence can be one of the many frustrations we have as a family, but, one of, but some of the greatest joys that we've ever had as a family when we see our confidence proven true. So when they do something they've never done before, and it happens, Brody and Lily are a little bit different than that. Brody's a little bit more like Nicole where I'm going to test things out. So when Brody started walking, he hung onto the wall for a very long time. Whereas Lily just kind of like me, hey, I'm going. And, and some of our greatest joys when we put our confidence in something and it's proven true. See, this is how we know we can be confident in our salvation. Jesus did. And that what he has done has affected our life to be just like him. Loving others to help bring transformation. See, this is where confidence is found, that Jesus' love compels us to live like him. And you see that, that whole part there where it says, you will ask for what you want and you'll receive. See, when we are abiding in him and we become like him, we will ask and receive because we'll ask for the things that he wants. When you're becoming like the one you follow, the things that you ask for, are the same things that he asked for. What he wants 
we want. And in turn, what we want becomes what he wants. We're, we're one and the same. Mark 14, 36 says this, And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. So this is famous for Jesus in the, the Garden of Gethsemane, right? And he's praying. He's praying so hard he's sweating blood, which is an actual physical thing that can happen. You're under so much stress that the capillaries in your forehead burst. And the only place for the blood to go out is the, the sweat pours in your forehead. And so he's prayed that hard, and he said, God, can you, do that? can you take this away? He wasn't afraid of death, by the way. He wasn't afraid of death. He knew, what death. he knew what he needed to do. He was afraid of taking on the full wrath of God. He knew what the full wrath of God looked like, the same wrath of God that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? The same wrath that flooded the earth. And Jesus is like, I don't, I don't want that full cup of wrath. I've seen it. But what's he say there? Yet not what I will, what you want. The things that Jesus asked were the same things, right? That God asked of us. Not our will, his. Hey, well, you'll actually, what you'll find things, the things that you're asking for now, really you start praying for the people around you. His love and command is trustworthy, and when we abide in that, we can be confident in that. See, when you're hanging on, that word abide means hanging on. Just hanging on. Right? Hanging on. We can be confident in the fact of what His love is and what His commands are. You see, when we change the way we view things in our life, our life will change forever. Mark Batterson says this, the circumstances we ask God to change are often the same circumstances God is using to change us. Some of the things that we're asking God to get us out of is the actual circumstances in our life that he's trying to change our view to, uh, instead of a me view to a God view. And that's where we know we can be trustworthy in his commandments. That as we're loving the people around us, he's changing us to be more like him. I'm going to ask Amber to come back up. Matt, you, you can come up too if you want, Matt, but I'll let you ask Amber that. We need, we need this morning to understand we've got to believe in the fact that he loves us and his commands are good. See, we look at the Ten Commandments sometimes, just the ten, right? There's 600 and I think 17 commandments total, right? That's where you get some of like it and I don't eat pork, grow your sideburns out really long and curly, all that kind of stuff, Right? But they're his commandments. Just looking at the Ten Commandments, we've got to understand that those are in there because he wants the best for us. And so we need to believe in the fact that he loves us and that his commands are good. See, we can have confidence in who he's making us to be. You've got to understand, you've got to have confidence in who he's making you to be no matter where your life is right now. You can get over, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what these emotions are next week and how, how people can can dive into those emotions and try to trick you to see if you're really following or not. But really, you can put things to the test and understand that you just have confidence in who he's making to be because he's who he says he is. It doesn't matter, right, who we are emotionally. It matters that he loved us enough and where we're at, no matter where we're at on this journey. See, we need to stop searching for the emotional mountaintops and we need to look for God, the God in the valleys and how he's working to change us. He's not putting you in a valley just to change you at times. You, you might be in a valley just so you can seek him and abide in him a little bit. See, we live in a broken world and valleys are a part of it. It's the hardest thing about a Christian is, is that your world, your life, is not only based on your life. There's broken people inside your world, so it breaks everything that's in your world. You could be on the perfect journey with God, and you still live in a broken world. So we just got to understand, we just abide in all that. We abide on the mountaintops, we abide in the valleys, we abide in the okays of life. Because he's working to change us to be more like him. And here's the important part. Let us do this together so the world can see how great he is.
that's where I feel like where the great divide is right now. We have a broken, broken, broken world. It's broken. It's been broken since the beginning of time. And this broken world needs to see the God of the valley putting pieces back together. They need to see it. Matter of fact, when they see your pieces being put back together, there's a, there's a compelling that goes on in their heart and they're like, I don't understand that. But that's what I want. See, you don't just accept and follow Jesus and everything's perfect. Matter of fact, I say this a lot, I'm going to say it again. The only thing different about me and you is I got a microphone that's working sometimes and sometimes it's not. I'm just as broken as you are. But I want the world to see God fixing that, putting the pieces back together. I want people to see, I, want them, I just want to be so transparent that somebody that struggles with what I struggle with might see that there's hope in it. That there's a God that loves you and is rescuing you from all that. So two questions, and I'm done this morning. The first is simply this. Have you decided to follow Jesus? However you want to put that. Have you decided to get saved? Have you decided that, that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior? I like to say follow because that's what he commands us. Have you decided to follow Jesus? And that's, that's just a decision of saying, you know what? I'm done living for me, and I'm ready to live for him. I know that he came to die so I can have forgiveness of everything that I've done and every time I've taken him off the throne. And I want to follow that. And I want this new life that his resurrection promises. And I want him to be Lord of my life. If that's you this morning, that is unbelievable. I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready to show you where this journey could go. I just need you to tell me or tell anybody in this room. It could be Amber or Matt. It could be Nicole in the back. It could be my dad. It could be somebody that you go to and just say, hey, I'm ready to follow Jesus. And if you're in here and they come to you, you can stop me at the end. We'll talk more about what that looks like. I'll give you some information. Now, here's the second question. Like I say every week, that second question is probably more for me than it is you. Where right now in your life are you putting your confidence in? Are you putting that confidence in your ability? Are you putting that confidence in how much you read your Bible this week? No, I. There's some times I come in here. And I'm like, Amber, shoot me the songs. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get into it this morning. Because it's a song, right? You know, you're just like, oh, yeah. And I'm going to get in. I'm going to dig it. My heart's feeling pumped up, right? Those are things that I put my confidence in sometimes. But ultimately, when I come in this and not even just preaching. When I walk in tomorrow, into this school tomorrow, I should feel confident in the fact that Jesus loves me. And that not just my mountaintops and not just those glorious moments that Jesus is saying, hey, look, this is, this is what I give you, your blessings, right? In those valleys when I wake up and I'm just not wanting to do life that day, that he's using that to draw us closer to him and to live like him, Right? So where are you placing your confidence this morning? Your ability or what he's already done? So as I pray, I'm going to ask you guys to stand. Father, we come to you this morning, and we thank you for that love. We thank you for that grace. We thank you for that mercy. We thank you for the mountaintops, the blessings, and we thank you for the valleys and the deep, dark holes that we're in sometimes. You are found there, and your love is true. So what I pray this morning is, is that we just cling on to the fact that you love us. That you love this world so much that you came to die, and to raise again, to, to fix the brokenness, and to give us new life, and to give us a relationship with you. So let us celebrate that with our lives. And let us live with that in our lives. And we will give you glory and honor and worship and praise. We ask this in your son Jesus Christ's name.
Amen. Thank you guys for coming out today. Um, you might wonder why there's some things on the, in the middle there. Um, there is a play coming up next week. Our high school is doing Mamma Mia. If you guys want to come see it, I know there's tickets. Um, also remember um, Dylan Spangler this morning and also Carson Burney. And if you ever have any prayer requests, you can reach us at CMV Carlisle um, at Gmail. Or you can go on social media to send us anything. So I hope you guys have a unbelievable fantastic week and we'll see you guys next week